Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. You're tuned into Propaganda Watch, that series where usually we dissect the pronouncements of the talking heads of the establishment media and expose them for the lies and propaganda that they so self-evidently are. But this week we're going to have to flip the script. You see, for years we've been told by the talking heads of the establishment media that any American withdrawal from any of its military engagements anywhere around the world would instantly devolve into complete disaster. America has to be in Afghanistan and Syria and everywhere else around the globe because without America there to stabilize the situation, it would descend into chaos and mayhem. Let's never talk about Libya and what happened there. But anyway, getting back to the point, it seems that the establishment media talking heads have been proven correct with the latest withdrawal question mark from northern Syria and the complete disintegration of matters there, as proven by this startling footage taken there in northern Syria of the Turkish assault on that part of the globe. This video right here appearing to show Turkey's military bombing Kurd civilians in a Syrian border town. The Kurds who fought alongside the U.S. against ISIS. Now horrific reports of atrocities committed by Turkish backed fighters on those very allies. A reporter, take a look at this live streaming video when a convoy is hit by a Turkish airstrike. President Trump ordering about 1,000 U.S. troops to withdraw from northern Syria. Since pulling U.S. troops from the region, hundreds of ISIS prisoners and sympathizers have gone free. About 200,000 Kurds have been displaced, and Kurdish leaders now looking for help from unlikely new allies. ABC's Ian Panel is in Syria to lead us off. This video, obtained by ABC News, appears to show the fury of the Turkish attack on the border town of Talabyad two nights ago. Now, that is some startling footage that appears to show, as ABC News puts it, the assault in northern Syria. But, I don't know, I'm no expert, but it seems to me that that is not footage of a bombing, as the the anchor says there. That, that, that looks to me like gunfire at explosives of some sort. Almost as if it was done for some sort of, I don't know, gun show or something in Kentucky. Oh, that's right. That's because that's exactly what that footage is. And you've just seen the original footage, the 2017 footage, uh, at, uh, taken at a gun range in Kentucky. And then the 2019 ABC News breaking news report. F live foot. This is footage from Syria, guys. Honest. Well, that lie, as I'm sure many of you have seen by now, was spectacularly exposed in the last couple of days. We'll take our cue here from Zero Hedge, which has ABC admits to using fake footage of Kurdish slaughter, um, which notes that uh, ABC News was just busted using two-year-old gun range footage while reporting on Turkey slaughtering the Kurds in the wake of U.S. withdrawal from the region. And uh, it goes to show the footage side-by-side -side comparison. It is the same footage. They passed off gun range footage from Kentucky as footage of Turkey slaughtering Kurds in Syria. Now, again, the fact that this is incorrect footage is not in dispute because ABC World News tweeted out just in the past 24 hours or so, we've taken down video that aired on World News Tonight Sunday and Good Morning America this morning that appeared to be from the Syrian border immediately after questions were raised about its accuracy. ABC News regrets the error. <laughs> and then, to top it off, I mean, you, can't, you cannot make up how stupid this is, Greta Van Susteren jumps into the fray in Twitter, tweeting, This is horrible, horrible. What was ABC News thinking? If we in the media want credibility, we have to stop doing stupid things like this. <laughs> <laughs> which has a certain ring to it, doesn't it? This is horrible, horrible. I'm I'm shocked to find gambling going on in this establishment. Here's your winning, sir. Thank you. So, yeah, 
I wouldn't exactly trust Greta Van Susteren to be the watchdog watching over these types of slip-ups in the mainstream media. How did this type of thing happen? Oh, it will undermine our credibility. Which, I mean, even, you have to ask the fundamental question, how does a mistake like, a mistake like this happen? Let's give it the most charitable interpretation possible, which is that some idiot at ABC News was handed this footage by someone trying to prank them or whatever and said, hey guys, this is footage from Syria. And they took it and apparently with no vetting whatsoever, aired it as, hey, and we just got this footage, which appears to show, and note the weasel words, which of course covers their bases, appears to show the Turkish assault on the Kurds in northern Syria. Really? Is that what it appears to show? And why does it appear to show that? Oh, because you were told that's what it was. And you actually said it was footage of bombing when it's clearly guns firing at explosive targets. I mean, it's just mind-boggling how this could have passed the rigorous standards of reporting that are held up by these bodies. And that's the most charitable interpretation in which all of this was just done by incompetence, essentially, the incompetence theory. And perhaps if this was one singular isolated incident of, oh, we're broadcasting this as if it's coming from Syria, but oh, we were called out on it, oh, it's actually from Kentucky. If that just happened once, maybe it would just be incompetence. Maybe we could look over it. But of course, it hasn't happened once. It has happened many, many times over the years. And always, interestingly enough, always against people who are on the State Department hit list. So, so for example, I mean, the, the narrative thread here would be that the people in the establishment who got America embroiled in Syria in the first place do not want America to leave, so it is in their interest to broadcast footage, uh, horrific footage of, oh my God, can you believe this atrocity that's happening from Syria? Um, even if it's not from Syria, who cares? As long as you give me the pictures, I'll make the war. Well, again, this is not an isolated incident, and we can get, garner many different examples of this from some articles uh, that have appeared on Global Research. Michelle Chosodowski has compiled this information in the past. One of these articles is called The Routine Use of Fake Images and Video Footage by the Western Media, which talks about, for example, a, uh, a photograph that was supposedly taken in the 2014 protests and uprising that was taking place in Venezuela at that time. Uh, CNN uh, used this photograph and then had to admit, oh, actually, this photo was taken in Singapore. There was a 2011 BBC News report, uh, which now on YouTube goes under the title Stupid Media Lie by BBC, showing Tripoli's green square with people waving Indian flag, <laughs> in which, again, the title on the screen, Tripoli, and people are holding, waving the Indian flag. Hmm, one of these things doesn't quite add up. It's almost like they're making this up. Uh, other examples, back in 2008, there were the Tibet 2008 riots, in which we were purported to be shown by CNN footage of Chinese cops in khaki uniforms repressing Tibet demonstrators in China. But one little problem with that, the cops were not wearing Chinese uniforms. They were wearing Indian uniforms because the footage was not from China. It was from India. Oops. Oh, did we do that? Oh, how did that ever happen? Uh, more examples of that. Uh, in fact, several more examples from the 2014 Venezuela uh, incidents, riots, and the photos that were being plastered everywhere that were photos from other countries, including Egypt, Argentina, Singapore, uh, Honduras, basically everywhere but Venezuela. Um, anyway, it seems like that was a fair game incident for any photo to be taken and, and published under the name of Venezuela. Uh, again, there is a pattern going on here, and it's not difficult to see. When it is in the media, establishment, corporate, conglomerate, complexes, interest to portray an event as happening in this particular place, oh, there's some sort of atrocity, this will justify everything. Or there's some sort of great spontaneous rally that's going on here that that shows that we're on the right side of history, as in Libya and etc. And it is shown that that was fake and was actually imported footage from somewhere else. When it happens over and over and over again, the incompetence theory doesn't quite add up. And you'd have to be 
quite an idiotic incompetence theorist to believe that after so many examples to the contrary. All these examples will be in the show notes, and I hope that you'll be able to add some more of your own. What are some other examples of the mainstream media? Oh, here, look at this footage from this, which is actually something of complete, something completely different. I have talked about other examples in the past, but I'll let you dig up your own, and uh, we'll compare notes. But anyway, this is just an example of how there is no credibility to be saved amongst the establishment media. The only people who believe in it seem to be the establishment media themselves, which is particularly ironic coming from people like Greta Van Susteren, who are proven liars and colluders with deep state intelligence officials. Uh, so anyway, make of this what you will. One thing to note from all of this, if you're taking geography classes, don't, don't watch MSM. Don't get your geography from the mainstream corporate talking heads. That's a little free piece of advice on this edition of Propaganda Watch. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.